welcome to the In Case You Missed It Club. This is a place of positivity on the internet, if you can even imagine such a thing. And I'm very excited today to be joined by one Ms. Page Toon, author, best-selling author, best-selling author, international phenomenon. Hello, Paige. Hello. <laughs> how are <laughs> you? International phenomenon, Lizzie, Lindsay. Cow. <laughs> That's how uh, Paige and I like to refer to each other exclusively. <laughs> International <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> um, I'm so pleased to have you here today. I'm sure everyone watching this already knows who you are and they also know we're mates, so there's no point pretending. Uh, so apologies <laughs> ahead of time for all the times we talk about watching Moana in your hotel room at, at 1am. It's <laughs> the saddest thing that we're not going to do this year. But the greatest thing we are going to do this year is read this book, everybody. Mm. This is Paige's newest book. It's called The Minute I Saw You. It's out now and you should totally buy it. Oh, and we've got, yeah, the is there a special guest? <laughs> there you are. Say hello to Lindsay. There she is. When I was telling my kids, you know, you have to be really quiet now though. I'm talking to Lindsay. Isn't Lindsay your lovely author friend? <laughs> Yes, yes it is. That's exactly how she likes to be addressed at all times. Who wants to steal your daddy? <laughs> I mean, I got over that. Yeah, I finally I accepted kidding. that I'm not going to marry Paige's husband, Greg, a very handsome man, and deigned to marry Jeff, uh, <laughs> which I thought was very big of me, and you should both be very grateful, but like... I appreciate whatever. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, yes, I'm sorry. So this is my lockdown <laughs> special. Nice. My my Ooh. rhubarb syrup, homemade, Ooh. and um, with, with vanilla vodka and lemonade and candy floss. <laughs> oh, God, that sounds delicious. <laughs> the last of the batch. Honestly, it's like the best cocktail I've ever had in my entire life. But it is the last of the whole batch, and no. my glass is looking very crunchy. I made it like a week and a half ago, and it's just been in a bag. <laughs> you made your own candy floss. That's very impressive. Yeah, I bought, I bought the machine for my, for my son's birthday last year. Uh, so the idea of In Case You Missed It Club is we are going to delve into the past, be it recent past or forever ago, because time means nothing anymore. That's the one thing we can all be sure of. Uh, and we're going to remind ourselves of some of the things that uh, affected us, made us happy, made gives us like giant memory triggers, all those things that we're going to talk about. So the first thing I want to ask you is... One of my favourite questions to ask anyone ever. What was the first record that you ever bought for yourself? Okay, so um, I was trying to remember this. <laughs> I've, I've like dug out all of my old things and including like a million like little records. I used to be like, I, obviously the first record that I really remember was cassette play, you know, cassette. And it was yeah. Cindy Lauper's album. Nice. So I remember listening to that all the time, you know, True Colours and Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And I think that the first like actual record that I bought with my pocket money, like just looking at this massive list was one of Cindy Lauper's as well. But also the same year, I believe, according to what's written on the record, is Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. And I was so relieved to find that those two both were released in the same year because the other one that I found, which I came across first, and I thought, please do not let that be the first record I ever bought. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. I didn't buy that was I can't ever get through life saying that that was the first record I ever bought. I so. think that's extremely cool. I mean, it's not touched by body, which would have been even yeah, cooler. That's <laughs> true. I don't even do that one. I mean, you know, Tom Cruise and wow. Millie, Millie. I still remember how incensed I was when um, when I discovered that they were the real singers. I was so cross. What I'm very uh, admirable of here is that a lot of the singles that you're holding up are not the most well-known singles of that band, which is hilarious. I don't know what I did about that. I think it must have just been like, they never stop me from love. I mean, that's a classic. Sonia's a classic. <laughs> I, mean, I definitely do have like some other ones. Like, this is one of my favourite songs, Banana Rama, A Cruel Summer. So I just got like a... A massive sort of, you know, rock set. You know, Listen to your heart. What a, what a banger. I've got, yeah, I've, there's honestly, there's a massive stack here. I could just sit here all day just like lifting up more. more so you were a big, you were a big muso. Pouring the hell out of you. <laughs> no, honestly, it would not. This is, what, this is why we're doing this, because this is now my favourite thing to do. It's just troll. I've trolled through all my old shit. Now I have to troll through everyone else's. I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, my first record was wildly embarrassingly um, The Right Stuff by New Kids on the Block uh, on 7-inch. 
uh, which I was just immensely proud of, so proud of. And I used to take it places with me, right. even though, like, what was I hoping to do with a seven inch <laughs> record? I don't really know. Um, so moving on from first record, because I will just make you show all of them <laughs> otherwise. Um, this is a big one for me is fragrance. So I have like a million scent memories that will just take me back to a time and a place. Some good, some bad. Uh, what is the first scent that makes you think of a time? Um, so the first perfume I ever sort of went and bought for myself, and I must have been like a teen, I was definitely a teenager at the time, was Paloma Picasso. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Because <gasps> I remember that I really distinctly remember going to, I don't know, you know, some department store and, and you know, how you had to go and sort of try them on your skin and then sniff them, wear them for a little while. And, and I remember I was so really wanted to be really grown up and like buy a perfume, a perfume that would be me. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, um, I do. I remember that was the one I settled on, which I think is really quite strong. Like, I, I, I you know, you were I, not messing around. No, I don't know how long I wore it for, but you know, yeah. It's sort of no Charlie Red for page two. <laughs> yeah. No exclamation. We're going straight on to Paloma Picasso. Well, yeah, frankly, it would have been like impulse, but I couldn't for the life of you, you know, let me tell you what, you know, what was the first fragrance of impulse. Yeah. Through a whole bunch there, of them. There's vanilla kisses that just haunted my year 10. That's the yeah. impulse vanilla range that, that was a oh, dark really? time. A dark time for everyone involved in <laughs> a comprehensive school, let me tell you. They brought, uh, they gave away a box at school. They brought a box of, I guess, impulse sent them to the school. Uh, like to start us off like little addicts that we were um, by just giving us a free can of vanilla kisses and the entire school smelled of it vanilla, i think that sounds good uh, i like oh it was kisses. so sweet though it was so sweet and you put it on roughly 30 teenage girls like 30 15 year old girls that just stink of sweet vanilla i'd look at that cocktail sucking like on her on her candy her crunchy candy floss and her vanilla vodka yeah I, I like the sound of that impulse <laughs> yeah, I know I'm like, actually maybe I'll try and get you some um, it was it was not my favorite smell of all time and now I can't bear vanilla because of it but um I don't mind the taste so I would I would struggle through that cocktail <laughs> <laughs> well I won't just try and serve it to you next time we're on tour together <laughs> jealous, so jealous so moving on from fragrance, I want to ask you about your first makeup item because, again, such a such a big thing for a for a lass. Do you know what? I know what it was. It was I saw it in my diary because I know we're we're getting to diaries. We're absolutely getting to diaries. And I must have been given like a makeup kit, and you know, in one of these entries, I say, you know, I made makeup today with my friend, and it was green, green makeup. Oh, <laughs> eyeshadow. Wow. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Green eyeshadow. Nice. I mean, I vaguely remember it. And I'm pretty sure it was frog coloured. Not like a nice, not like a nice moss green. Oh wow! <laughs> just like a proper green, just a legitimate proper. green. And I do remember nicking my mum's makeup. Like I, you know, used to sort of like take her Estee Lauder and sort of try that on, and you know, yeah. went through wearing a lot of blue eyeliner. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. My first mess up was a very 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 cheap mascara that spent most of its time on my cheeks and I thought I'd been so clever because we weren't allowed to wear makeup for school I was like well no one will know <laughs> all over my face it was all over my face by the time I got to school it's nightmarish oh. well you've, you've come a long way you've she come says, a long way <laughs> not today she hasn't <laughs> this is not my best work but thank you um, and I'd love to see you in a, a green eyeshadow, perhaps a green eyeshadow with the blue eyeliner. Oh, now that would be beautiful. Yeah, I think that would be very 2020, It'd be very avant garde. Next book tour, <laughs> next book tour. That's that's the rule. Like, we'll be opening night, we'll be green eyeshadow, <laughs> blue eyeliner. Um, oh. I've got a couple more questions. I'm just desperate to get to these diaries, but I've got a couple more that uh, we're going to power through. Celebrity crush, go. Hmm. So, so the main sort of big celebrity crush I remember was Brad Pitt, but that was later. So I, yeah. it might have been Tom Cruise, you know, like. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, like start, Tom, start at the top. Top Gun, yeah. And, and I, you know, I write about sort of seeing Dirty Dancing for the first time, but I don't talk about Patrick Swayze and how much I, I'm attracted to him. I talk about the dancing was terrific. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I was the same, isn't that weird? Because I was obsessed with Dirty Dancing and I used to watch it all the time, but I never, ever saw it in a sexy way like it, the yeah, sex scenes sure. were not I was not interested in them I wanted to be baby like I wanted to dance like I wanted that moment that's crazy 
exactly it. You know, family so, they'd known. Yeah, so I don't know. I think you know, possibly Tom Cruise might have been one of them, or Fair yeah, enough. yeah. It's hard I to mean, remember. Starting at Brad is is not a bad place to begin, well, is it? Yeah, I mean, I definitely went through quite a heavy Brad obsession for quite a few years. You know, yeah. after Phil Louise, and yeah, I still wouldn't kick him out of bed. I I've got to admit. <laughs> No, have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I have seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I have. It's my greatest wish is to just see him around LA and be super cool about it. <laughs> and just be like, yeah, saw him. And then move on. Like, I just, I, that's all I want. I know where he lives, but that's weird. So uh, <laughs> he actually lives really near a friend of mine. Um, but they've lived in that house for like 15 years and they've seen him like twice. So oh. I don't like my chances. But you never know. You never, never know. know. Yeah. Uh, if I do, I'll give him your number. Obviously. Thank you. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Just like, well, I'll FaceTime you. Right. Like my mate page. Right. Love you. Can you say hi to my friend Paige? Doesn't matter if it's two o'clock in the morning. Just do it. Yeah. So that leads me to favorite childhood book. Obviously, that's going to be a big one. I'm sure you have many and more than one. Yeah, it's difficult. So, um, so the one that I kind of always really remember was the Velveteen Rabbit because I just remember listening to that over and over again on on cassette, you know, tape and just. You know, I'd obviously read the book as well, but, you know, you should listen to the audio book, like, constantly, you know, really, really loved it. And it was so, I read it again to my kids, um, you know, a few years ago, but, you know, had just sort of bought it for one of them and, um, and you know, was was sobbing, you know, I found it really hard. <laughs> to read. I found it so sad as an adult. I found it sad as a kid, you know, because the idea of, you know, having to, like, burn all of your teddies was, like, the most horrific thing, you know, imaginable to me, you know, but um, reading it as an adult, just, like, you know, it was desperately sad, but then just seeing in my diaries, you know, I read Watership Down, there's that one diary entry about Watership Down, which I found, you know, that's quite powerful. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> Why were children allowed oh, yeah. to read or watch Watership Down? I don't I understand, because I read oh. it when I was little, too, and I think I'd seen the movie and been utterly traumatized so <laughs> someone thought well let's let her read the book and see if that helps and it didn't it did not help <laughs> I know it didn't I mean this is the weird thing you know and like just sort of seeing all of the films that I used to watch as a kid my yeah. parents were really slack same. Was, oh same they really they, they let me watch any old anything you know like I think I saw Alien when I was 12 or something, you know, and it's no, like that. No, exactly the same. I'm so glad. Okay, so maybe this makes sense as to why we do what we do, because I'm exactly the same, because I have an older brother who's five years older. So basically, they, I feel like whoever was looking after us on the day couldn't be bothered <laughs> to, to install, like, an age range where they're like, look, she's only seven. I know her <laughs> 12. But yeah. She's only seven. And they were just like, you know what? If he watches it and she watches it, it's up to her. She could leave the room and... Same, I was seeing Predator, I was oh. seeing Aliens, I've seen all these, and they're all reviewed in my diary as being quite good. So yeah. everything for me is, it was excellent. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I loved everything. E-X. EX was just like, that That was like the only adjective I could use Amazing. to describe it. X. <laughs> a very impassioned review of Conan the Barbarian, <laughs> uh, which I was super into. I started watching it on the Friday night, super into it, because I was watching it while I was writing my diary. And then telling a story about how Arnold Schwarzenegger had come to my village in the 60s or 70s, whenever it was that he was a bodybuilder and he had come to a bodybuilding competition in my village, which is like village folklore, but is objectively true. Um, <laughs> so it's a fact. I don't know why Arnie and I would ever need to chat about Harworth and Burkhoats, but we could because he's been there. <laughs> Um, and I got really into it. And then the next day, my diary was just like, yeah, I, I don't know what happened because I fell asleep. It turns out it wasn't that good after all. But it was like literally 24 hours later. I was like, this is the greatest film I've ever seen. It's so exciting. They're going to sacrifice her. So he's got to do it to her. So she's not a virgin. And I don't even know what's going to happen. And then it was literally 24 hours later, like, I fell asleep. Don't care. Whatever. It sounds absolutely enthralling. I've never seen it. But now oh, I really <laughs> must. You really must. <laughs> It's fantastic. The original, not the remake, please. You've got to do the Arnold Schwarzenegger. You've got to do the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, I just want to know more about these diaries. That's all I want to know, Paige. I want you to read from my, read to me from your diaries until the end right. of time. So I managed to find them after searching high and low. I couldn't remember which, which like the top of which cupboard I'd put them in. So it was very, very dusty and had to get changed before then. <laughs> But um, I haven't seen these in so long. And I managed to find the first ever diary that I ever, oh, wow. ever wrote. Like, you Look know. at that. The padlock, the padded oh, cover. God. I have something very similar. 
I was a fan of that. And it was given to me by my parents' friends, and they had a son who was like one of my first loves, one of my first loves. And I've written, you know, a lo- a lo- put a love heart around his name. Says, "I love him forever." <laughs> nice, nice. Oh Christ! Um, <laughs> so, I mean, there's just so many totally random kind of like, you know, random entries. You know, because we used to travel a little bit when I was growing up. I used to go to like, you know, I lived in France. I lived in um. Australia and in America or in England, depending on you know where, where my dad was racing at the time. And so this was the point where we'd move to England and go over to France, you know. And so I'm in France today. Tomorrow the Japanese are coming to our house, or they might be sleeping at the trap, you know. I hope they sleep at our house, you know. And they're sort of I'm just writing really sort of silly things like that. And anyway, we're in this. We, we were staying in this really old sort of house, you know, like on the river in France. And I was obsessed with these lizards. So at this sort of entry. <laughs> Now I must go because I will help mum do tea or catch lizards. There are lots of lizards around. You know? And then the next day, the very next day, today I caught a lizard and it bit me. <laughs> so I took hold of its tail and held it over the water. Suddenly the lizard fell into the water and swam away and left me with its tail. I was dreadfully upset. <laughs> that is traumatic. I understand that lizards can detach their tails, some of them, but that is very yeah. traumatic for me. I, I mean, honestly, for years I tried to catch one of those lizards. So <laughs> too. To and then you caught one and it actually surrendered its own tail rather than hang out with you. Oh, it was very, very sad. And then, cool. the, so, uh, I don't know, a few days later, I think, I think we're still in 1985 at this point. So there's a boy at school who I'm in love with. Honestly, this is, I cannot believe how many crushes I have. You know, I have, I've only sort of really looked through this first book, but I know, you know, like from, from experience, you know, that. Oh, you know, from 10 I'm, on, all lot- my diaries are is just how I am in love. <laughs> and, and it's like very intense periods of complete devotion and then one day it'll be like oh, I don't like him anymore I like this person now and then a complete like six month devotion to that person and it's none of them I went out with none of them like that's all you need to know well I'm very glad it's not just me because I was like reading this and just like oh my god what was I like you know no, utterly boy crazy utterly boy crazy every Every single entry, every single day would start about something else and then eventually wend its way around to what had happened with the boy that I liked, which was <laughs> nothing until I got to about 14, 15, when that's just all that they were. There was just nothing else. I gave up on any pretense of caring about anything other than boys. Oh, God, honestly, it's, uh, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So there's a boy at school who I'm in love with. I met him at my school in Mr. Pippin's class for the first couple of days. I- Guys, can you? Sorry, <laughs> I'm just doing a dramatic reading here. <laughs> family just like wandering through the room, you know, like reading my diaries is a very personal thing. Very. I mean, we're practically in therapy right now. I mean, the only only person I can possibly share this with is you. Thank you, and all of our readers, and everyone that's watching. Everyone that's watching. <laughs> For clarity's sake, I do just want to explain to anyone who might not know, your dad was an actual racing car driver. Yes. Your yes. dad raced racing cars. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bonkers growing up. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you were traveling so much. Yeah, so we were traveling. Chasing quite a lot. lizards and boys. Yeah, yeah, going to Le Mans. We went, we went to Le Mans every year, basically. Amazing. Was, yeah, Le Mans. So, yeah, we used to always stay at this little sort of little, well, for the first few years, we stayed at this crumbling sort of decrepit little house that was right by the river and it was just amazing. And then, um, you know, in the later years, when Dad started running his own team, you know, we'd, we went and stayed at a proper big chateau, you know, and, and obviously had, you know, some of the Japanese businessmen who ran the team, you know, sponsors mm-hmm. would come and stay too. And clearly I, I wanted them to come and stay with us because I found it fun with all these strangers around. But um, <laughs> How would you not? <laughs> it was bonkers. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, for the first couple of days, I thought he was a pain. Then I thought he was okay. Then I was so much in love with him, I fell asleep practically saying his name. And then I put in brackets, if I read this bit in my diary when I'm older, I'll probably think writing that last bit was stupid. <laughs> I'm in a hurry because I want to read this book. It's called Tiamo, means I love you. That's why my writing's so messy. And then I said, I can't bother to write anymore. <laughs> I, I mean... I love how brutally honest we are with our diaries. That's my favourite thing. I can't be bothered with you anymore, diary. Goodbye. And the best thing is writing for ourselves in the future. Wild. I just sound like an absolute nutcase, you know. (laughs) But when you love to go back and explain to baby Paige that actually when you read this when you're older, you will be a romance author (laughs) who actually has made a living out of this utter madness. 
clearly yeah very clearly like I mean I, I think I read there's you know the, all the Sweet Valley High books are in here you know sort of read yeah. those and I think I must have read quite a lot of Mills and Boone because there's <laughs> some book names that I don't recognize that you know clearly I was just sort of making my way through all these love stories but oh my lord did you ever read the Sweet Dreams books which were like Mills and Boone for teens I'm not sure. They does sound very familiar. Yeah, they it, were that's... amazing. I found um, when I brought all my stuff over, so I brought all my childhood stuff over to LA last summer from um, home. Having been here 11 years, I thought, fair enough. <clears throat> Probably sticking around. Um, so I brought over all my books and I got this massive, massive, massive stack of Sweet Dreams novels and I've been rereading them. That's like the only thing my brain can process. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Sorry. It's got a frog in my throat and um, I've got lizard's tail in my throat. Um, <laughs> But you've got to read them. They are insane. And I think if this is what I was putting into my tiny growing brain <laughs> as appropriate, it's mental. It's just all what American teenage girls. They, in what way are they? They're, they're all very overwrought love stories from American teenage girls, invariably American, mostly high school based. Some of them are like summer vacation based, something like that. Um, but it's just all very traumatic and highly strung and over emotional very rarely would be considered feminist <laughs> very rarely would be considered acceptable in these times a lot of the storylines are very much like oh I wish I was pretty and then one boy will finally come and say well I think you're pretty and then that's the end I mean oh. there's a lot of that there's a lot of uh well you shouldn't do that you should do this and then they go oh okay it's it's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> going on that made me ask a lot of questions about what I was doing growing up. But I heartily recommend them for anyone looking for a, uh, a an early '90s nostalgia kick. That sounds very funny. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. Uh, it would be fun to sort of go back and read a few of those sort of stories that I absolutely love when I was younger. You know, sometimes yeah. you read. You know, I think the power of one was the book that I really remember as a teenager. You know, sort of read. Yeah. You know, it's such a felt so powerful and stuff. You know. And, really memoirs of a geisha I think I read that in my very early 20s and you know these sort of books feel really really powerful and you know I'm, I'm sure there are some that I've then gone back and read and and thought you know you're just in a different place you know yeah. when you read them, and it just feels so much bigger when you're a t when you're a teenager doesn't yeah. it yeah well this is it when you're a teenager and I just remember my mum all the time thinking saying things like oh you act like it's life or death oh you act like this is the first person that you're the first person this ever happened to and I'm like well, but for me I am like for me this is right. life or death like I have never experienced this before I don't know how to process it for me this is the moment most momentous thing that has ever and will ever happen because I have no frame of reference I think it's wild that we say things like that to kids because it's like well yeah it absolutely is what do you mean I'm grounded when I'm supposed to go to the pictures with Darren Morris this will absolutely not stand you know it's like you have just got in the way of my entire future happiness and it, I, I don't understand what's so difficult to understand about that that was the big thing in my diaries life I was just so much of me being like I don't get what they don't get like yeah. oh, <sighs> funny. I like reading some of these now you know at, at the age when I'm 10 in these in these diaries yeah. I just can't get over how much I sound like my daughter. That's so you know, like I remember her sort of sitting in the back of the car, like we were going, I think we were driving somewhere and, you know, she was cross about something and I just remember her sitting there with this like, look on her face, you know, and you just knew that what she was writing was yeah. like murderous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we were like the worst people in the world, you know. And like, you know, there's one entry in here where I'm just saying, you know, like we had to go such and such and it should have taken this long to get back. But my mum, in like capital letters, yeah. wanted to see her friends. You know? <laughs> so, Classic mum. Oh god, honestly, I just I cannot believe how much I sound like her, or how much she sounds like me at my age. You know. Would but, you let your daughter read your diaries? Do you think? No, no, <laughs> no. These are like yeah, these are, these were hidden away. I can't imagine ever letting anyone read my diaries, you know, apart from me. I mean, I, I was reading some out to Greg earlier and we were just laughing, you know, because it's so sort of ridiculous, you know, like just some of the some of the stuff I used to write was just so, so silly and just funny, you know, but yeah. <laughs> just, you know, yeah. That's a big thing, reading mine through, I'm like, who am I writing this for? Because there is a sense that like perhaps I thought they were at some point going to be of historical value. Like it really feels at certain times where I'm like, what, where were you going with this? What were you thinking? Because it doesn't just feel like you're just writing, you know, it feels like I'm writing for someone. And then there are others, like I say, where it's just like, 
there's a lot of me buying Fimo and Sylvanian families. Oh my god, things. same. I was obsessed. I was obsessed. I used to make little Fimo things all yeah. the time. I'm into it now. You know, my do- it's hilarious. You know, like in fact, it only it honestly, I didn't even put it here. But you know, she made like this Fimo cake for my husband's birthday recently. Oh, so good. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That looks like a very delicious gatto. You should have seen you should have seen the unicorn cake she made, which I don't have here, but um like that was really good. It was a wine she painted it with sparkling nail varnish. That was nuts, you know. But when you were sort of asking me in advance, you sort of gave me an idea of obviously what we were going to be chatting about as so I could find my diaries and things. And you were asking me about what was the brand that was, you know, yes. big when we were younger. And I, you know, I texted my friends, you know, my old school friends, because I was like, What, you know, I can't remember all this stuff. And the list they sent back and the nostalgia, you know, I mean it's just yeah. I was saying to you earlier before you press well, before you press record, you know, how much I <laughs> book in case you missed it, because you know, just like the whole nostalgia involved and you know, wanting something that you can't have and you know, and just going back to that time. I love the title of the book, you know, so it's very, very clever. Yeah. You're so good to me. You're so good to me too. You are oh, it's like it's the best sort of book to be reading at these times, you know, just something something nostalgic but just really fun and funny. And you know that I think you're one of the funniest writers in the business. Oh, that's- very nice of you movie. to say. And when you've, you know, finished reading my book, maybe you could read this book, this book right here. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the book. Tell us a little bit about the book before we go. All right. Well, the, this is a book that's about Hannah and Sunny. And Hannah is a um, dispensing optician. And basically, Hun- uh, Sunny goes in to have his eyes tested one day. And, you know, to be up close and personal with someone who you are physically attracted to, in the case that you know like Hannah normally she she stares into work, like strangers eyes you know at, at work every day but she has this connection with Sunny and so there's a sort of frizzle on this you know like chemistry between them and but she doesn't neither of them actually do long-term relationships but so she's quite thrilled that he's planning he's going back to Amsterdam the day after he picks up his glasses he's a photographer she's thinking you know I'll, I'll sort of see what happens maybe just do a one night with him you know and um anyway so when he comes back in again he can't meet her eyes and he's basically you know like a shadow of his former self something really bad has happened to him and over the course of the book you find out why you know Hannah's got this very unusual backstory the whole idea for the book came from that you know I'd sort of you know been thinking about what would happen if this you know just one of those things where you see you know like a film or a read a book or something and you know inspired by this tiny little thing and I, can you hear the dog growl? I can absolutely hear the dog growling and it's amazing I just I feel like this is Tessa saying like I have heard you talk about this book so many times I can't even I can't even she cannot even <laughs> please someone help I just think you know it's it's nice to have some background noise it's nice to have well, yeah, I mean, they're just done with it. They're like, right, mum's done five live events now. Like, we're not going to be doing any more. Look, mum's a big deal. Mum's kind of a big deal. You're just going to have to accept it. You're going to have to move on. <laughs> if only that were the case. On the other hand, it's like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> no, none of us will ever, ever get that from our own families. It's the law. Uh, but well, you'll get it from me. I think you're kind of a big deal. Um, so, where can everyone find you on the internet? Should they be so inclined? If they would like to visit me, you can obviously go to pagetune.com, which is my website. Um, but, you, you know, the book is available to buy from the 6th of August in paperback. It's out in ebook now. And I'm on at pagetune author on most of my social media channels. So come along and say hi. I love hearing from my, from my readers. So it's all very nice to hear. But yeah, I, I would say this book is kind of both the lightest and the darkest book I've ever written. You know, it's sort of a combination of the two. There's a lot of, you know, kind of really joyful, fun chemistry between these two basically Sonny ends up swearing himself off sex you know he's sort of like in order to form lasting relationships he decides he's not gonna you know go down that route that was the most disappointing part for me I've got to be honest (laughs) I know that's not the point of the book but I'm like well if he's only into one night stands I guess I'll just have to break my own rules and it will be fine (laughs) oh no but it was fun sort of like writing about the chemistry between them and you know the fact that they couldn't take it any further you know because of these issues and and then yeah the, the I back. did wonder if that uh, part of the story was inspired by a comment Lucy Vine made last year when she said that your book last year, she had never wanted two characters to F, <laughs> F quite so much. And like, I feel like you took that challenge and you ran with it. Uh, and that you basically wrote this entire book just to mess with Lucy Vine. I did wonder if that was the case. Trying to do a head in, yeah. Did my head. <laughs> I was just like having to get to that point, you know, in the book, you know, when something might finally happen between them was, that's, but that was fun, you know, that's what's, that's what keeps me writing, you know, I just love yeah. sort of those kind of climactic points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
oh she's so clever with the play on words oh, I don't know well I've thank you a long time oh, it's, it's true it's true it's been so long I do think the publishing the diaries is the next natural step I think the, the page two memoirs never ever gonna happen <laughs> Just, just, just denying us so much joy. I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> I'm going to read yours. This is it. Next time we'll just do this without knowing that it's going to go out to the reader. And I want you to properly show me proper excerpts of stuff that you don't want anyone else to see. Honestly, I thought about um, posting bits of it, but there's, I, I just am very free and easy with names. And I just don't think <laughs> there's too many people who would be like, wait, that's not very nice. So like, no, it wasn't. You weren't very nice to me at school. So I was not very nice to you in my diary. <laughs> um, and I don't think that's a very mature response. But, you know, I was 10. So what are you going to do about it? Um, but thank you so much for joining me. And this was the most fun. But thank you so much. And everyone check out The Minute I Saw You. It's available now and you will love it.